Amy Hawke and Alan James worked with Associate Professor Mal Cox to show the Lockyer Valley as you've never seen it before. Our first image shows the soil, clay, silt and gravel deposited by flowing water over the Lockyer Valley plain, while the second image shows a view of the whole valley with the ground surface removed. The image looks west toward Toowoomba. Lockyer Creek is the winding blue line. The green surface is the top of the sandstone basement. And the third image shows a slice through the ground and basement surfaces in the lower part of Lockyer Creek looking north. Uh, but I think the other challenge we have is obviously to provide the careers. Uh, Gen Ys might have lofty views about the future and the contribution that they might make, but we've actually got to ensure that we provide careers for people who are interested in these disciplines. And that's been a real issue in universities. It's a real issue as well. And for those who become, a, and those who might be a bit despondent about all of that, I actually say that the example of teacher education, including math, science, tech education, is, uh, is, is that the recent experience of the math, science, tech ed and broader teacher education is actually a little bit encouraging. Uh, it was very difficult indeed to attract the, the sort of students that we needed to attract into teacher education programs five years ago in this country. But there's been, and but we've gone through and we've, we have exhausted the process of talking down teacher education and, and I think there are signs that, that people are seeing the, nobleness, the nobleness of, of teacher education returning. It's certainly returning in terms of what young graduates are doing. Now I can't think of anything more exciting for a young person to contemplate than a, a career that might actually make some difference to the condition of the planet or a career that might make some difference to the human condition in terms of health outcomes. But I don't think that people necessarily see science like this. And we've had a very worrying national debate around, for example, climate change, where with regard to climate change, and I'm not an expert in the field, but just observing the debate, with, with respect to that issue, uh, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of criticism of the integrity of the science. I note there's been very little criticism of the integrity of climate science in Australia. But there obviously have been some methodological frailties around climate science elsewhere, and that's tended to diminish um, the view of the integrity or importance of that work, and it's important that that rebu be rebuilt. Renata Buziak describes herself as a photo media artist. Born in Poland, her work, which fuses science with art, has been presented at a number of galleries and solo exhibitions since moving to Brisbane in 1991. Coral Garden, from Miss Buziak's Untamed Garden series, was created by a process she calls biochrome. Biochrome is a unique image-making process that is based on capturing the art in organic decay by forming alliances between plants and photographic emulsions. Coral Garden presents the viewer with a spectacle of colour. This large-scale image depicts North Stradbroke Island's unique shoreline vegetation in its various stages of decomposition and allows for further study of fascinating organic shapes and forms. Natural sciences, physics and chemistry, this is what science is all about, gathering facts and creating laws. We've somehow got to get across to the uh, next generation of scientists or the potential next generation of scientists that we're not just talking about natural philosophy or the natural sciences, we're talking about the full gamut of things from the natural sciences through the biological sciences, the environmental sciences, the social sciences, even heaven forbid the economic sciences and the, and the way in which all of those various disciplines can be brought together to address the significant issues we face as a people and as a planet and to resolve those issues. And I guess we also need, whilst we're at it, to point out to them that the scientists alone aren't going to do it. It's going to be the combination of all of those sciences together with a, a spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship that will generate the new solutions to, to our major issues. You know, it always amazes me when people ask why science is important to Australia. I mean, for me, uh, it is the, the bedrock of everything that we need to do to solve all the big issues that we face, whether they be environmental or social or economic. Uh, by way of example, uh, if you think about uh, 
the social changes that we face with respect to health. Uh, roughly uh, 20 years has been added to the average, average lifespan of Australians over the last 100 years. We're spending infinitely more, no, that's not a very scientific phrase, we're sending, spending more and more of our budget on health. Uh, most of that's due to chronic disease and most of it's uh, due to the people in those last 20 years of added life. 70% of our hospital bills are due to chronic disease. We're not going to be able to afford that, so we have to develop the technologies that are going to enable us to prevent the levels of chronic disease that are presently found in old people in our community. Older people in our community, I should say. So, what that boils down to is uh, science of all persuasions. It's the, the physics and the chemistry and the biology, the basic stuff, combined with the health sciences, combined with the social sciences. All of those things need to be brought to bear in order to address major issues like that. Despite great efforts to develop early detection methods for ovarian cancer, most patients are still diagnosed at advanced stages of the disease when the tumours have already spread. This cancer can also become resistant to current chemotherapies and that means that ovarian cancer remains a major women's health problem with only 30% of patients surviving for five years. Dr. Daniela Lusner conducts ovarian cancer research aimed at better understanding its progression and why cancer becomes resistant to chemotherapies. Part of that research is aimed at developing better imaging tools to look at cancer cells. The first image we see is of a conventional two-dimensional flat cell culture. Cell nuclei are stained in blue, the cell cytoskeleton is stained in red, and proteins of interest are stained in green. But in our bodies, cancer cells, like the rest of us, grow and behave in three dimensions. So a more realistic microenvironment has been developed to encapsulate human ovarian cancer cells. In this image, the cluster of ovarian cancer cells looks a bit like a soccer ball. These coloured images were taken using laser scanning microscopes and the 3D movies were generated over seven days. If you didn't know they were cancer cells, you would think it was just a beautiful art form. Thank you.